All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm gonna touch a little bit on this video here by a YouTuber that you may know him. And then, or before that though, I'm gonna I just touch a little bit on this video that I, I went over a little bit yesterday. It's, it's very interesting to me. Uh, my guess is that's supposed to be one mine or one any mind, I'm not sure. Uh, but I just want to go over one portion of this video that I find uh, very interesting. And then I guess before I even get started, I just want to uh, thank you all for these comments here. I appreciate you very much. So let me read. Uh, I think there's only three or four here. Let me read this one here. Very well put. Uh, Babas Babinos 8075. He says, very well put. This is something ill irrelevant to the topic I wanted to ask you because it confuses me who do you think Melchizedek is is it Jesus or a priest because if I am not mistaken we don't know where the city he comes from is could it be mirac could it be a miraculous appearance of Jesus or a foreshadowing of him and so the the very clear answer the very simple answer I can give you or the easy answer is that it's a force he was a foreshadowing of Jesus now it's true we don't know there's not a whole lot of information and I've not really studied this out um, but it, what the question is in reference to here um, is I believe from Hebrews 7 where we get uh, numerous mentions that one Hebrews 6 2 and Hebrews 5 all right where we get uh, many mentions of uh, Melchizedek called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek and um, made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek and the inference if you will is that um, Melchizedek is uh, at the very top of the priest hood right and then so Jesus he is our high priest Okay, so in other words, Melchizedek being the high priest uh, way back when, and so now Jesus is our high priest. Um, does that make sense? Okay, so um, yeah, I you know definitely a foreshadowing. It's not a what was the other option you gave here? Uh, it, it no, I don't think. I don't think you can say it was Jesus um, and um, but a foreshadowing of Jesus and so let me uh, scroll down here a little bit and read these other comments and then I'll touch on that just a little bit here Jesus told the criminal on the cross today you will be with me in paradise not you will have a second chance right and so in this video here they go over that particular verse the lady over here and the gentleman with her they say that well um, the guy on the cross he got Jesus told him hey today you'll be with me in paradise uh, you're gonna get a second chance and this gentleman here rightly corrects them and says that's when the thief on the cross rebuked the other thief and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ right then and there when he said remember me when thou enter into thy kingdom he believed in Jesus at that moment and at that moment he was born of God and Jesus assured him that he would be with him this day in paradise and <laughs> it's so stupid 
to, it's so stupid to say no they both got saved no they didn't both get saved only the one the one rejected Jesus the other accepted Jesus and that's a monumental moment and how you could screw that up is beyond me so let's go uh, thank you for that comment right there and then the why is that so he says you sir have never heard understood the true gospel good news before never explanation point you have never heard because you cannot hear understand but you will when your time comes all will all right so uh, if that were true boy you know if that were true I sure would like to hear the gospel good news right I mean if you truly believe I have never heard the true gospel then please tell me what is the true gospel all right so maybe he answers it right here he says reincarnation is true <clears throat> excuse me it was taught by Jesus all the apostles understood it and it is still in Orthodox Judaism oh Orthodox Judaism well if the Orthodox Judaism teaches it then to hell with what the Bible says right we got to we got to listen to what the Orthodox Jews say. I mean, after all, they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. That they ought to know. Reincarnation was taught by the first true early church until the false Roman church outlawed the teaching in 355 A.D. at the Second Council of Constantinople. Nopal. Constantinople pool. Monopoly. I, I don't know what that is. Why do the people say, or I'm sorry, who do the people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and one of the prophets of old has arisen. Oh, wait, that's that's a great that's a great verse, but whom whom do you say that I am? <laughs> well, why would you leave that out? What, what are you trying to say? This is... Jesus was reincarnated from John the Baptist? Or Jesus is reincarnated uh, Elijah? Or are you saying Jesus is reincarnated from one of the prophets of old? What in the world? You're really all you're doing is deceiving yourself, man. Is that Mark chapter eight? Here, let's do it this way. let's see let's do it this way because this is great stuff I mean this is uh, what verse was that 27 and 28 is that right whom do men say that I am and they answer John the Baptist some say Eliza other one of the prophets and he saith unto them but whom say ye that I am and Peter answered and said unto him thou art the Christ Matthew 16 same thing and they said so, you know whom do men say that I am whom do men say that I the Son of Man am and they said some say thou art John the Baptist reincarnated some say Eliza reincarnated and others Jeremiah reincarnated and others of one of the prophets reincarnated that might be what men said
but that doesn't mean it's true. That doesn't mean Jesus was John the Baptist reincarnated. I could show you what in the Bible how ridiculous that would be. Alright? But Jesus says, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, bing. He got it. He's right. Ding, 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 ding. He got it. That's the correct answer. That is the correct answer. And that is the rock which the church is built upon. What in God's green earth are you teaching, man? Oh, we're all reincarnated. Well, it, that sounds a little bit too Mormonish, Mormonism-ish, doesn't it? And that's what the Mormons teach. You know, if you if you believe in Mormonism, if you believe a a twenty-year-old pervert came along with these golden tablets, tables, or whatever, 150 years ago, or however long ago it was, if you put your faith and trust and hope in this 20-year-old pervert who says he had the true word of God or whatever, and that we can't believe the Bible anymore because it's outdated, we got to put our trust in this 20-year-old pervert, if, if you believe that, then you're going to be reincarnated and in the reincarnation you'll be given your own planet and free will to have sex with all the virgins you want if you are a Christian and you're you know low IQ because you're not smart enough to be a Mormon then you come back you're reincarnated on one of these Mormon planets but you're reincarnated as a white person so yeah that's pretty good huh now if you reject Christianity and Mormonism all together well you come back as a black person that's no good that's Mormonism <laughs> so is that what is that the gospel is that the good news good news you won't come back as a black I mean what in the world is wrong with people unbelievable who sinned this man who was born blind or his parents well do you know the answer to that now you post the question as if you're completely ignorant of the answer. All right. Am I being too hard on this guy? If I'm being too hard, I apologize. But man, this is stupid. Do not be, be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he also shall reap. And this life or the next. Is that a question? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. So we got the resurrection that is promised when Jesus returns. The resurrection is not reincarnation. Reincarnation will be if we were to die and then be reincarnated into something else and um, oh geez you know I, don't, I didn't want to go this direction but Jesus says I tell you the truth that we shall not all sleep or not maybe it's Paul but Jesus even says that there will be some standing here who shall not see death and that so that right there alone destroys the idea of reincarnation and why in the world would you want to use that term reincarnation when it absolutely 
is resurrection. Jesus wasn't reincarnated. He was resurrected. He destroyed the old temple and he built a new temple. And so when we are resurrected, we are not reincarnated into our own old body. We're not reincarnated into a butterfly, as some teach. We're not reincarnated in. I mean, the, what they teach, I believe, what is it? The Buddhist or the Hindus or maybe all of them, I don't know. They teach this idea that, well, when you die, you come back. Your soul gets transplanted into another creature on earth and you are reincarnated. So you might, if you die today, you might, you know, and a baby's and a baby um, kitten is born, then you're reincarnated into a baby kitten. All right, maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's the way I understood it. It's, I mean, it's all. There's nothing you can pinpoint. There's no scripture of Hinduism or Buddhism to say. Well, right there it says, it's all vain philosophy so anyway who cares I mean come on man where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched the worm is the maggot that consumes a dead body and the fire is the trials pain and suffering of the this world that refines and perfects the spirit so the world perfects the spirit not God this wicked world perfects the spirit God act doesn't have anything to do. I mean, come on, man. No, I don't know the gospel. You've never heard the gospel. Well, tell me the gospel. And this stuff here is nonsense. All right, maybe I am being too hard. I apologize, man. I'm just... You got to understand. I, I wake up, I drink my coffee, I get fired up, and then I get all this crap thrown in my face, and it, it fuels me... It burns my rear end and so on and so forth. But I do appreciate those comments. If you could please, for the love of God, tell me what the true gospel is. And I desperately want to know it. If if I've never heard it. Because I firmly, strongly, with full confidence, believe the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for me and he gives me eternal life through him. That's one way to put it, right? Because Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. He died to cover all our iniquities. And because Jesus is pure, I am pure. Because I put my faith in him. And it is by the grace of God that he has saved me. Just like what we read it, you know, I could go on 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 and on and on about that. What what's it say? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Maybe I should type in what must I do to be reincarnated? Would that be a better question? In Acts chapter 16 that very question is asked what must I do to be saved that's a great question what must I do to be saved well let's see if it gives us an answer and they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved so I believe that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and just like what we read in Matthew 16, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I believe that. I believe that He saves me and preserves me forever. I believe I will never die. If you believe in reincarnation, then you inevitably believe in death. Alright, so I don't want to get into all that stuff, but I do appreciate uh, that. I believe, I appreciate uh, appreciate it. Whether, whether you even, you know, even if you don't believe what your, the questions or the position 
that you are posing even if you don't believe it I want to encourage you to present it and so that I can respond to it and so that I might be able to grow and that you also might be able to grow and so I don't know if you've encountered or even use that sort of technique to present a view that maybe you don't necessarily believe but you present it so that you can hopefully get some clarity from it right and so I want to encourage you all to do that um, I mean obviously it's, it's hard for me to believe that this fella here is fully convinced of reincarnation it, because it's nonsense I mean but I do appreciate him presenting that view and having the boldness to present it and I want to encourage that for sure okay all right so let's move on uh, so uh, the watchtower teaches second chance theology and that's that's great and wonderful that's true that I apparently that they do these people do for sure I've had uh, you know the Jehovah's Witnesses in, t in my house and um, yeah. and so we got to a point to where uh, in my opinion this older gentleman uh, he was I think he was uh, 70s he might have been 80 might have been 80 something uh, he came over to my house uh, two or three times and so the issue I had is that he rejected what the plain Bible said, what the plain scripture said. And I can't remember exactly what the issue was. Oh, it might have, well, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. So, never mind. It doesn't matter. So, I've talked to him. I want to say it's a, it was about who got saved. But it doesn't matter. Um, with this fella here, he's talking to these this couple, and this couple is saying that uh, it doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus or not. When you die, your sins are paid for. You pay for your sins with your death, and everybody gets a second chance during this thousand years that comes after Jesus returns okay you talk about, talking about nonsense earlier you, this is even bigger nonsense but I just want to play a small clip chapter 12 verse 2 and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt yeah. so we'll rise both sides both parties and then those who believed in Christ will receive eternal life, everlasting life, will be in his kingdom. And then those who did not believe, chose not to believe, and rejected Christ, there will be judgment and contempt and shame. Do you think that's fair, though, if somebody, uh, you know, is wicked? Like Michael said, maybe they didn't have the opportunity to learn about God, and he dies, and then is resurrected and judged by his past mistakes. Does that go in line with God? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a great question. Is it fair? These people that reject Jesus Christ, is it fair that God punishes them? I mean, is that a God of love? God being a God of love? I would say... <laughs> Let me... Yes. I would say yes. I mean... Come on, man. You, you don't believe in justice at all? No justice. Just everybody, everybody's a winner. I mean, you think about the suffering that you go through, the suffering that I go through, and you're going to, you got this lady that's going to come along here and say that there is no retribution no repaying for evil and I mean does it get any more wicked than that 
uh, to me that's crazy right say so you can reject Jesus Christ you can persecute Christians the, the children of God you can speak evil and it doesn't matter because God loves you God would never punish the wicked so you're sorely mistaken lady sorely I mean can you believe that so this gentleman does a good job he's got it he's got it exactly right that God will avenge his elect I, mean, I shared that verse with you many times right the, which cry out day and night cry out day and night oh see come on man what did I misspell that oh, I'm curious now maybe maybe Mandela is real maybe Mandela is a real thing they changed my Bible on me it's unbelievable they did it didn't they they did it Mandela man I was wrong Mandela is right golly man oh duh, come on it's not cry out okay and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on the earth I mean it is very clear crystal clear all throughout the Bible judgment day is coming all men are gonna have to pay for their wickedness all men all men there's a day of judgment coming and the only possible way for you to survive the day that is coming is if Jesus covers your sin in fact when you are born of God that judgment on you is made and therefore there will be no judgment upon you when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the only thing that will happen is that you will rise you will be transformed you'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye you will have put on incorruption and you will have put on immortality and you will meet the Lord in the air and then the judgment of God which is the wrath of God will be poured upon the whole earth well that's mean and cruel and well if you know that then you ought to fear God right and there's you know numerous verses right there was this fear not them that can kill the body but not the soul fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell that's not a vain verse in the Bible the wicked will be destroyed and there's so many verses we could go over and here's this lady 
saying, oh, that's mean. That is so mean. You think a god of love would do that? Yes. This guy rightly answers, yes. Does that go in line with God being a god of love? I would say yes. <laughs> I would say yes. You really don't even have to think about it, man. Yeah, what in the world is going on here? So, anyways, that's enough of that. And so, real quick, real quickly, I think I don't know. I wanna, I wanna go over this guy. I forgot what he said, but let's listen. There you go. Now, first question that came to us: What is the first resurrection exactly? And as a result of that, subsequently, what is the second resurrection? Remember, this is a theme that comes up throughout the New Testament. It's all right. Also remember this, there is no second resurrection. Alright, so, we can, we can do this multiple different ways, but let's just type in second resurrection. Oh, there it is. No, it's not there. You won't find anywhere in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, any implication suggestion whatsoever of this idea of a second resurrection Jesus is the first resurrection right he just plainly comes right out and says I am the resurrection there shouldn't be any mistake any doubt about it Jesus is the resurrection he is the first resurrection, just as we read in 1 Corinthians 15. He is the first fruits of them that slept. And then, of course, um, in Revelation 20, it says, um, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, which is Jesus Christ. He is the first resurrection Jesus plainly says I am the resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the resurrection in the first resurrection which is Jesus Christ okay make no mistake about it it's not rocket science man it's not it's very simple stuff it's a theme that is supported all throughout the scripture Right, First Corinthians 15. It says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. It's not rocket science, man. It's very simple. Very simple stuff. Jesus is the first resurrection, and then when he returns we are resurrected blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection how can you rightly say that you're saved if you are not taking part in his resurrection right now I mean really you're saying that you're not a priest of God right now are you saying that the second death does have power over you right now Think about this. On such, the second death has no power. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. Those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us right now. So let's continue. It's not... The Revelation 20 is not the only place that mentions this. So we're going to read our passage that, that mentions this in Revelation 20, but then we're going to go to a few other places in Scripture as well. And we're going to try and put them all together. We're going to read them synoptically. We're not going to assume... I'm not smart enough to know what synoptically means. I can't even say that word, but nevertheless... Uh, that, that one is right and the other's wrong. We're not going to try and cut them up into a million pieces and dissect them. We're going to read them synoptically, and we're going to assume that the revelation that John received and the revelation that Paul received are both, we know and believe that they're both true and accurate, and if we kind of lay them over the top of one another, we're going to we get go. the whole picture. Yep, there we go. So that's, that's you know, basically that's what I've said. Um, 
I've tried to share that other people say it too you know and that is that the book of Revelation though and the whole Bible really in general you, what you do is you got to connect the dots right so and in other words when you read about Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven in Matthew 24 and then you read about Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven in Mark 13 these are not two different returns of the Lord Jesus Christ okay you've got to be able to connect the dots you've got like he says you gotta put one layer over on top of another layer and you can see how they line up and so also I've used the analogy if you will that uh, the book of Revelation is painting many different pictures of the same thing all right. we're getting different angles of the same thing and then there was a gentleman the other day that I shared who had a, like I think a crystal ball or something and uh, depending on what angle you looked at the crystal ball the light would reflect in different ways you know and so I thought that was a pretty good analogy as well and so also I agree with this fella here when you you got all these different layers and when you put them on top of one another they all line up all right and so basically just connect the dots that's all it's not rocket science man once you connect the dots everything becomes clear because that's what God does often in the Bible he gives different biblical writers pictures and when you put the pictures together you see the whole picture the whole, he gives biblical writers parts of the picture and when you put them together you see the entire picture. That's the best way to say it. Okay, Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6, go like this. And I want you to be listening for this phrase, the first resurrection. Then I saw, throne, then I saw thrones, and seated on, on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. I also saw the souls of those who had... All right, so what's he reading here? He's reading from a junk... Bible version. If I could talk to this guy, he's probably too popular. Uh, maybe I'll leave a comment. All right. So he he's reading from a junk. Uh, you know that's interesting, right? Listen to what he says. Let me share something with you. Who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand It's the zombie doctrine. They came to life without a head. It's crazy. So that's, you know, that's why I call it the zombie doctrine. It, the way I'm when I read that the corrupt version that's what I'm envisioning when I when I listen you got zombie headless zombies roaming around the earth for a thousand years I mean I saw that movie the other night man. it's a good movie but it's not the Bible right now I'm just kidding I didn't watch that movie uh, I might watch it later so this is very interesting I want to share something with you in Revelation 22 it talks about if any man adds unto the prophecy of this book or I'm sorry if any man shall wait where are we at here if any man shall add unto these things the words of the prophecy of this book God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book now okay so this this is how I this is what I see happening all right follow me on this all right so in these corrupt Bible versions they are changing 
this and they are adding this. I better draw a parallel. Alright, so you can see it plainly. Let me draw a parallel. Where are we at here? We'll use the NIV since it's so popular, right? That might be what he's reading too. I'm not sure. Jeez, you can't even tell. They don't have. That's awful. Right there. Okay. And they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That's not what Revelation 20 verse 4 says. It says they lived and reigned with Christ. So the implication over here in the NIV is that they came up out of the graves and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Um, it, to me, it, it I, how in the world anybody falls for this is beyond me. But okay, consider this. This, when the people that read this and they believe that, they don't believe in the Bible. And so what happens when you don't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? You are cursed of God, right? So everybody that does not believe in Jesus is cursed. And the law is, uh, it essentially it exposes that curse, right? Is there a good verse I could use? Oh, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For Israel. Okay. So I don't know if I can. I haven't really prepared for this, but. So. I mean, I don't think anybody can disagree with me, but. If you are. Um, not born of God you are cursed and you're destined for hell right now if you don't believe in God then obviously you don't believe the Bible okay and like it says even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord when it shall believe in the Lord Jesus Christ the veil shall be taken away all right so when people add or take away from the Bible uh, and specifically right here in Revelation 20 verse 4 they are adding to the Bible and they came to life so that's adding to the scripture and so what happens when you add to the scripture God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book see you can't believe this is the true word of God and many people today that read from the NIV do not I don't know you cannot but you cannot read the NIV and believe it is the perfect Word of God it's impossible I, I don't think any half intelligent person would ever make that claim what they always say is well you gotta go back to the originals and they say that through ignorance because there are no originals the, the serpent uh, deceived them tricked them into thinking oh there's originals I'm, I was tricked when I first became a believer born of God I had this question and I emailed some lady at some Bible Institute and I said I asked her uh, basically about that and she told me that there are original manuscripts in which the English translations are based upon and it's from these originals that we get a variety of different um, translations. I have no idea what that meant, but I went along with it. And then until I got more studied, and I started noticing that this can't be right. This can't be right. 
when you collate the different Bible versions, there are uh, many verses that uh, com this, they say the complete opposite. They, com they teach something that is completely contrary to the other version. And so which one do I believe? And well, through time I started realizing that the King James is right on every single uh, point of contention. Every single time. But I can't, I can't, uh, you know, wrap my head around it. You know, why does this say that and this other one say this? Well, so one day I, I thought, well, I'll go, I'll go find the originals and I'll try to decipher for myself what the originals say. And lo and behold, there are no originals. They do not exist. I could have a million dollars in my hand and I could present it to you and say this is yours if you show me the original manuscripts and you can't touch that million dollars because you can't touch the originals they do not exist period that's the dirty little secret they lie they're lying to you and the thing is that these people they it's not like they know the truth and they're deliberately lying to you it's be it's that they've believed a lie and in turn they lie and um, I mean it's look it's great I know I get it man you can take whatever the Bible says and you can twist it into whatever you want simply by going to another language and then using all the variables for that word in a foreign language it's a wonderful trick right it's a wonderful way to deceive people and to prove whatever point you want to make that's fine except it's not the truth right and so this is exactly what the NIV does and what's interesting is the NIV gets its translation from Roman Catholic manuscripts and these Roman Catholic manuscripts don't even have the book of Revelation and that's that's minor point but when you read uh, for example um, Matthew 18 verse 11 where it says the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost oh goodness sakes wow okay let's try this one more time the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost yeah wow well the NIV don't have it because some manuscripts d didn't have it. But what they don't tell you is it's Roman Catholic manuscripts. They don't have it. Those same manuscripts that they're basing this on do not include the book of Revelation at all. Now, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, I mean, really, if you showed me... Uh, you know, came to my house and said, here's the Vaticanus, and this is what it says. To me, it would look like a bunch of scribbles. I wouldn't understand one single word of it. Right? But the, this is what they're talking about, though. It doesn't matter. This is not the Word of God. There's no half-intelligent person on earth could honestly say they believe the NIV is the pure word of God not possible okay so right here in the NIV in Revelation 20 verse 4 it says they came to life talking about headless zombies apparently they are adding to the word of God and because they are adding to it God shall add the plagues, add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. See, they don't believe. 
the people that translated this, they don't believe. The, the people that believe this, they don't believe in the Word of God. Right? It's because they don't believe that God will add unto them the plagues that are written in this book. Right? Because they do not believe the Word of God. Right? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. See, Jesus is the Word of God in heaven, and the Bible is the Word of God on earth. Of course, Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. In John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thy Word is forever established in heaven. Where's this verse at? Established, established forever. Oh, good grief. Well, Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. I don't remember. I don't remember the, the exact phrase, but the Word of God is established forever and it will never go away first Peter chapter 1 the word of the Lord endures forever right languages come and go but the word of the Lord endures forever right and Jesus Christ is the Word of God all right now Again, when it says the plagues shall be added unto them, why is that? It's because they do not believe in the Word of God. And so this, again, this is why it is so important to believe the Bible that you, you hold in your hands. To believe this Bible, the King James Bible, is directly from God because it is. All right, now I want you to consider two things here. All right, um, the Word of God, the Word of Prophecy came not in old time but by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Word of God comes from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the, is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is God. All right, now, knowing that and believing that, then you ought to know that the Bible comes from the Holy Ghost, it does not come from man. It comes directly from God. And you think about the tables of stone that were given to Moses directly from God. See, God gives man his word directly. Just as God gave Moses the word of God, so God gives us the word of God. It comes directly from God. It never comes from man. If it comes from, if it comes from man, it's not the word of God. It's the word of man. Right? It's simple simple logic. But just as we read all throughout the Bible, it's always about faith. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart because they don't believe. 
Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when they shall believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then shall the veil be taken away. Why? Because now they believe. The power of faith, man. If you don't believe, you cannot see. In Hebrews 11, man, if you have any question, any doubt about this, any misunderstanding, any confusion, there's a cloud in your head at all, anything at all. Read Hebrews 11. Look at this. Faith. Faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. See, any argument against the word of God falls flat. Right? It's no good. It has no power, no steam. Anybody that preaches against the true Word of God, that preaches against the Bible that you hold in your hands, they are all of the devil. God would never say, you can't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. Uh, I guess God might say that if, you've, if you're holding a Satan's Bible or uh, Jehovah's Witness Bible or an NIV Bible, whatever. But we have the true Word of God in our language, in the King James Bible. Through faith we understand that the world are framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And it, we get a good history account here, from Cain and Abel all the way really up to this present day. And we see the, the importance of faith. It's amazing. It's amazing. Alright, so that's all I got today. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I'm going to check more out. I'm going to check this guy out a little more because uh, he seems great. Years. Other than the fact that he's reading a corrupt Bible version. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand direction. Over such the second death hath will reign with him for a thousand years. There you go. That was Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 through 6. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? The first resurrection. So who is included in the first resurrection? I believe, very simply, that this is talking about all believers from throughout history. Okay? I believe that this first resurrection is the same thing that the Apostle Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we'll go there in a minute. And you'll see that this is the same exact thing that Paul is talking about. Now let me address something really quickly. I know that John says right here in Revelation 20 verses 4 and 5, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. What some people say is that this is only a reference to the tribulation saints. All right. Okay. So that's no. Yeah. That's what the. the, the just it, to me, it drives me nuts, man. Because there's so many false teachings out there that it seems like yeah, almost you have to cover them, but. Sometimes when you go through and cover all the false teachings, the true teaching gets lost, right? So I get that. There is no seven-year tribulation. It's not anywhere in the Bible. All right? And the tribulation that we go through, that's not the wrath of God. And so anybody that equates the tribulation with the wrath of God is... it. Uh, to me, they're insane. Because there's no... Nothing in the Bible that suggests any sort of tribulation is a wrath of God. Nothing whatsoever. It's complete insanity. In my opinion. Um, and so this is the point that he makes. There's no tribulation. 
and he says that while well, I used to believe in uh, you know seven year tribulation and all this sort of stuff and then I've fallen away from that and realized that you know when you read um, Matthew 24 for example it says immediately after the tribulation then comes Jesus in the clouds of heaven just like what we read in um, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 behold he cometh with clouds right so um, there is no you know there is no seven year tribulation you're not going to find that anywhere in the Bible anywhere at all right you will not find that anywhere in the Bible at all. So I'm going to close it on one verse, all right? All right. Oh, I forgot the verse that I... Where's this at? Somewhere in the Bible. Oh, this is great stuff right here, too. Ye are my friends, right? Jesus calls us friends. And he says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That's important to understand. It's very powerful because you can believe this and that and all this wonderful stuff, but at the end of the day, it's about God choosing us. We can't take credit for nothing. All right. Have a good day.